Welcome to the official PDF YouTube channel. My name is Chris and on the previous video here on the channel we demonstrated how to create a survey form from Excel and turn it into a PDF. Can we use a PDF editor to create a survey directly? In today's video I'll give you a guide through the process of creating a fillable survey form in PDF. The strategy kicks into gear the moment we start crafting our surveys or forms. Generally when creating a form like a survey, our main focus is on shaping key questions that provide insights to improve our products or services. Consequently, the file format for our forms isn't typically a top priority. Nevertheless, this seemingly minor detail holds significant importance. Many people opt to create forms using text editors like Microsoft Word for the convenience and they're a lot more familiar with the program. Some prefer the ease and interactivity of online tools like Google Forms. Meanwhile, others choose raster graphic editing applications like Photoshop to create visually striking designs. However, what few people realize is that the PDF format offers all these benefits at once. Let me show you why. Imagine I own an online store that specializes in imported foods. And in order to boost my brand's reputation, I decide to survey customers measuring their satisfaction levels pinpointing any issues or areas for improvement, and then crafting personalized marketing strategies. With this in mind, the first thing I'll do is create a blank document using PDF Element. Next, I'll seek assistance from Lumi, the AI assistant in PDF Element, for guidance on crafting the questions for my survey. In just a couple of seconds, Lumi will have done all the hard work for me. All I then have to do is paste these questions into my document using the add text tool and in no time my survey questions will be good to go. It's pretty simple right? But what about the alignment of the text boxes? Surely after adding multiple questions you might wonder if these elements are aligned or not, especially if you're accustomed to working with Microsoft Word where alignment is automatic. Keep in mind that in the rulers grids menu under the view tab you'll find an option that allows you to enable a ruler. You can use this ruler to ensure that all elements are properly aligned. But in a situation like this, I'll not only activate the ruler, but also enable the grid. This way I can ensure to leave suitable space below each question for my customer's answer. Once the questions are set, it's time to work on the page layout. First, we need to determine what page size we will use. In this case, I'll go for the letter size. Even though I may not have immediate plans to print my survey, it's beneficial to know that the option to print is available if needed. We can specify this using the size tool from the Organize tab. Now let's go back to the Home tab. If you pay attention at the bottom left of the window, you'll see the page measurements in centimeters. These measurements will help us determine the canvas size to use in our raster graphic editing software to design a background for our survey pages. Once we have our design ready, we can export it as a PNG file. Then we head over to the edit tab, click on background and use the add background button to seamlessly integrate the background into your document. It looks pretty good, I think our survey is shaping up nicely. Now it's time to transform it into an automated survey. The first thing I'll do is go to the form tab, then depending on the type of response I expect to receive, I'll add interactive fields. For example, for the second question, how often do you purchase from our online store? I want to provide three possible responses. At least once a week, at least once a month, and at least once a year. In a case like this, adding radio buttons will be the best choice. And to do so, first I'm going to add text boxes to label each option. Afterward, with the radio button tool selected, I can click next to each label to add the interactive fields. Now to ensure that all these interactive fields are connected to the same question, all I have to do is open the buttons properties panel by double clicking on it, and assign them the same name. After that, in the radio button choice field from the option section, I'll replace the value yes with a label describing the value of each option. This will be useful later when I collect customer response data. Now let's take a look at the third question in my survey. It's a rating scale from one to 10 for customers to evaluate their satisfaction with shopping at my store. 
adding 10 buttons might not be the most visually appealing solution, as you can imagine. There are various ways to address this issue using different fields, but for me, the most suitable solution is to employ a straightforward text field. Text fields allow our customers to input practically anything, which means I need to configure some settings to prevent them from entering values different from what I've requested. To achieve this, I'll use the field value is in the range option, which is located in the validate tab of the text fields properties menu and set the range from one to 10. In the format tab, I'll set the format category to numbers without decimals. Afterward, in the options tab, I'll specify that the content of the field aligns to the center and I'll also limit the number of input characters to just two. Finally, I'll assign a name to the field related to the question number. And that's it. Now this field is completely error proof. It won't allow the addition of decimal values, plain text or any other value outside the range from one to 10. The process is quite intuitive and easy to learn, don't you think? And in just a few minutes, I've created an interactive form. Thank you for staying with me until the end of this video. If the video was helpful to you, I would appreciate it if you give the video a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing to this channel. I will continue bringing you more videos with many tips and tricks to make your work a lot easier. You can also take a look at the rest of the videos on the channel, but there's lots of other tips and tutorial videos just like this one. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.